Hello guys, it is Teenage DC Fan back with another video, and in today's video, I'll be reviewing the season finale of DC's Legends of Tomorrow, and this was a very packed episode, like a lot happened in this. Um, so this episode is titled Hey World, um, that has to do with the plot. Um, but anyway, let's get right into into this the episode, starting off with talking about John Constantine and um and Nora Dark and all those people that are like trapped down in hell. Um so Nora has to go looking for Constantine. She finds him, she gets him out of that torture place, and then they have to go um get rescue Ray. So but then Constantine informs her that you can't just like you use your magic to poof in there or anything. They need to, they needed to actually break in, and he knew someone that would. He knew the perfect person that could help them, and that's of course Astra. Um, I don't really know who she is. Like she's been in the last couple episodes. Actually, I think it was just last episode, but um. Yeah, I'm assuming she was on the Constantine TV show. But anyway, um I she she kind of hates John now, but they decided to work together because he made a deal that she couldn't resist. So then they went to um like Neron's palace or whatever or his vault and um they had a plan so Astra was pretending to turn in John so that she could get paid for turning his soul into them. So um, they convinced the the guard lady to take them in the vault so that she could put Constantine in there. But then Nora punched the guard and she was invisible so the guard never saw her. But then there were just stacks and piles of coins. And apparently each of these coins holds the soul of a, a person. And then, so they needed to get the soul, the coin to find the soul. So they found Ray's soul, but then Astra stole a bunch of coins of like really big dangerous people. Um... And then before she left, she did her magic thing so that they would be able to actually get to Ray. And then they got poofed into this dud dungeon. And, well, they were right outside the dungeon. And Constantine was telling Nora how horrifying it would be in there. And that they were torturing him. And that's why they were hearing screaming and yelling coming from in there. But then they opened the door. And Ray's just playing giant Jenga. It's like, oh... Okay, then. It was like, they built that up, and then it's just giant Jenga. Like, they made us think that he was being tortured. And that's what was supposed to be happening. That's what we find out. So, Vandal Savage has a cameo here. Because, apparently, Vandal Savage was sent there to torture Ray. But then they started talking, and then they just became friends. And they started playing giant Jenga, because... Why would you not play giant Jenga with one of your mortal enemies. Uh, yeah. So, I, it was cool to see Vandal Savage again, but he wasn't anywhere close to the way he was in season one. He was kind of just, like, he kind of acted like he was drunk. Um, yeah, he was kind of a little loopy. He, he just, yeah hard to describe it, but yeah, he was weird. Um, but then anyway, moving on to the idea on, well, actually, no, I can't move on yet. Um, so yeah, they, they talk to Ray for a little bit, then they leave to go get back into the normal world. Um, because, uh, Gary's wish was fulfilled. So then Nora gets sent back to the normal world, and she takes them with her. But then when they get back, Ray's not with them. All they have is his coin. And that is because, um, 
when since well since Neuron still has Ray's body, that Ray is still stuck in the coin, kind of. So until they get Neuron out of Ray's body, Ray is just a coin. So that kind of sucks for him. Um, but then the they all talk to the legends, and the legends come up with an idea. Well, Nate comes up with an idea to create Hayworld, because Neuron and the Fairy Godmother are becoming more powerful because of the fear. So then they just, the legends just decide that if they create Hayworld, then they can show the world how cool monsters and, cre- and these creatures are, and that they're not scary. So then they're like, well, how are we supposed to do this? Because it would like take two to three years for them to actually build Hay World. But then they remember that book from... I don't really remember when it was from. I think it was the beginning of the season or maybe last season when there was that giant squid. And then it's like whatever you draw in the book happens or comes to life or whatever. So then they get that book because Mick just stole it from the Time Bureau. Um, Not knowing about the plan, he just wanted to steal it. Um, So now... Nate can build Hayworld. And while that's happening, everybody else is, like, getting ready for it. So, Gary and uh, Mona, they are talking to the creatures, trying to figure out what they'll be able to do in the show and stuff. While Gar- um, while that's happening, the others are, like, trying to come up with plans. And then... Uh, after all that's done, they make a commercial for Hey World because you gotta advertise it, and that's what you see on screen here. Gary dresses up as the Flash, which was hilarious. Um, Nate is the Green Arrow, and Sarah is Supergirl. So they they dress up as the superheroes to try and get people to come to Hey World. Because they're like, oh, well, if people think there's superheroes involved, then they'll want to come. So then people do come. Because then once everything is, like, built from Nate's imagination, he goes to the park or where it was supposed to be built. And then he just draws it in the notebook and then it just appears in front of them. So then Hey World is built. And then, like, yeah, a lot of people come. And then there's the main attraction, like the main show. It's called Superheroes vs. Monsters or something like that. And Gary is acting as like the ringmaster type thing because this is basically a circus. And then he's basically introducing Steel and the White Canary. And then they're talking about how cool it is to be superheroes. And then monsters come in. And they're like, oh no, we should fight them. Or maybe we could get to know them and see that they're not big and scary. And then people in the audience don't like this because they wanted to see superheroes versus monsters. Not superheroes having a therapy session with monsters. So the audience gets upset about this. But then all of a sudden you see a giant dragon fly in. And this is that what hatched from that dragon egg that Zari had. Um, and now the fairy godmother is controlling her. Well, she, she's actually not a fairy godmother anymore, so I guess I can just call her Tabitha. Um, but yeah, so Tabitha is controlling her. She runs in, and it actually just looks like part of the show, even though it's not. And then somewhere in here, you see the monitor. He's up in the crowd just eating popcorn, watching as it happens. Um, I like that they had him in all four season finales um, for for this year. Uh, It's a nice way to set up the crossover. Even if he didn't actually say or do anything in this episode, it was still nice to see him there and know that he's watching the Legends. 
and also hopefully this means that they'll actually be involved in the crossover next year like that would be good um so yeah uh so then they have to fight the dragon and then sarah is about to get like killed by the fire of the fire breath of the dragon but then young zari jumps in front of her and basically tells the dragon to stop because the dragon was her pet and then she tells the dragon to do the, the sneezy dance or something like that so then the dragon starts to dance and zari and sarah know what it's doing so they are able to dodge the tail but tabitha doesn't know what's happening so then she gets flicked halfway across the room and then little Zari is basically controlling the dragon. So then the dragon swoops down, picks up Tabitha, and chomps down on her. So now Tabitha is dead because the dragon ate her. And then the dragon just turns back into a baby. And it's like, wow, that that happened. Um, so then they're all good there. But then Neron shows up, and then he's opening the portal to hell. So that all his creatures and stuff can, uh, you know, get out. And earlier in this episode, you saw that, um, actually, I, I won't get into that now. I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but then Constantine run, runs over to Neron and is about to fight him. But then Neron grabs him and chokes him and kills him. But then... Someone that looks exactly like Constantine, well, actually lo looks like uh, Nate, uh, starts talking to him. And then you realize that that's Constantine, and Neron killed Nate. And then this is going to affect Neron, because if he breaks his promise or his deal, then he will get separated from his host. So, because when... Ray agreed to let Neron take over his body. He said that he would only let him do it if he wouldn't kill Nate. And he killed Nate. So now Neron is getting sucked out of Ray's body. And obviously this is sad because Nate's dead and everybody's all shocked and stuff except for Constantine. Um, but then they're like, it was the only way. Um, yeah, but then Ray is like back to normal and then he, he wakes up and he's like oh everybody's here and then he looks over and like nate is laying next to right next to him and he's like nate no what happened don't leave me buddy so obviously he's sad about that and then zari is watching this from the wave rider and she needs to she wants to go see nate because she's in love with him and he just died um, so she needs to go see him, but then she finds out that if she leaves the wave rider, then the whole thing won't c complete where it, it, you know, where they fix the timeline and her brother and family were going to be alive in the future. But now because she left the ship and changed time, um, then it messed everything up and now that didn't happen. So then she goes to see Nate, and everybody's sad and stuff. But then you see up above, Nate and his father are reunited because, you know, they're both like ghosts now, basically. And they have this little talk, and bas his father basically says that he's proud of him and stuff. And then, and then Nate says that he loves his father and all that stuff. But then uh, Hank starts singing. And then you see that he, like, transfers that to Mick. So then Mick starts singing, and then he stops, and then everybody's looking at him like, what, do I have, do I have something on my face? And then like, did you just start singing? And of course, he says, I'm not, I wasn't singing, I don't sing. Um, but then Constantine says that it's someone from beyond that's trying to help them. So then he says, everybody starts singing. So then everybody starts singing. And then all of the audience and crowd comes back in. And they start singing. Um, 
And something I forgot to mention is that they killed Neron after he was sucked out of Ray's body. Um, Constantine just sent him back to hell, I think, or maybe killed him. I'm not too sure. Um, but anyway, back to where I was. So everybody's singing and stuff, and then they realize that is if fear gives you power, then hope and love will give you power as well. So, because of all that love and hope, Constantine is able to pick up Tabitha's staff and bring Nate back to life. So, it was nice that Nate had that little reunion with his father, but then he gets brought back to life. So that was nice. Um, and yeah, this is a very sad but emotional part. And he... He kisses Zari because, you know, they love each other and stuff. But then they're hugging, and then something changes. Then it, like, the camera does a weird pan, and then you see that Zari is not Zara anymore. She's a dude now, but nobody, like, mentions her any, it or anything, because now that is the new timeline. So they think that 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 was Zari the whole time. Well, obviously, his name isn't Zari, or maybe it is. Maybe that's her brother or something. And because the timeline was changed, now her brother joined the Legends instead of her. Um, so that'll be interesting to see that play out in the next season. And then basically the Legends just walk off, and they're happy together. But then, there, of course, there's that little post credit scene even though it's not after the credits but it's like after the logo flashes or something like what they do on, on the flash um and then it shows astra she is at a bank i think in hell and she is cashing in the, the coins for all those souls of those big nasty people that she stole the coins of so now she's basically releasing the souls of all these big evil people. So that's going to tie into the next season. Um, but yeah, this this wasn't a great season, but it was, this was a great episode. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in my next video so I can bestow all my DC knowledge upon you.